Hello, and welcome back for another stream. Um, since today is like a holiday for my day, um, I got a lot of more time to stream. So I already did a stream earlier on my German channel, but second stream today, World Witch, and we are back with Starry, as you can see. New story update dropped, version 2.2. We can go for Robin, which already puts a lot of significance into her actual, like, current state, since if we're getting her as a character, so it's probably unlikely that she's actually dead. And at the end of last stream, uh, um, yeah, the, the, the not last stream, but, uh, like, we ended off in a story like in 2.1 last time with Firefly actually having survived, so... Eh. I'm guessing both are still fine. But what exactly, or well, like how exactly like they are fine, we will still have to figure out and make sure like... Quite curious what's actually going on with that. But, first let's roll for up in a bit. Hmm, what can we get? Oh, how long does it take? Oh, I was actually like getting copies of some four stars. Uh, not much though. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Getting another copy of that one. Let's go for the exchange. I'm so close to actually being able to get another of these version. Uh, actually, I'm wondering how do, do I own them already? I have to actually check that. I own Carreras, I own Himikos. I own Bairu, I own his, I own his. I'm like, I think I'm only missing. Here, weld. I don't really care getting copies of the for them, and I'm gonna eventually get them through the stand up any anyway, so I don't know. Store. We can get two more tempos out of this. Let's see. A prawn air copy. Mm, I won't complain. Because I do like me my Branya. I'm like also like eating into the Onirics now. Um, let's get another tempo. Whoop. Okay. Other my Onirics look. Hmm. There ain't no Robin yet, but I will still keep going for her. Um, so I got some Eidolons for you. Serving under the Ten Lords as a judge of souls, I come to the world of the living to enforce their will. And speaking of Eidolons, Branya. The future of Bellabog shines bright. Mm-hmm. Getting more trans forward after using basic attack. And ultimate. Mm. Would boost a bit more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. We keep falling for uh, Robin another try at another time. I wasn't not that eager to get her necessarily today because when it comes to building characters, I actually have my focus currently on uh, Aventurine, who is getting there. And we're saving relics for last because uh, the most annoying thing to farm. Also, they they did change in the UI. Like it's not like a f free row column thing. It's for four columns now. I wasn't sure if I. Hmm, I, I mean, I already got the physical DD, so I don't have to worry about building a physical DD soon. So I could go for Robin. Oh, yeah. I actually definitely want to build these two as well, just to get another Pyro DD and another Imaginary DD. But they're not a time priority. And I will prioritize my five stars for the four, four stars. Just because. I don't feel like I any of those already like need for specific constellations. Besides them, maybe. Hmm. I just really like having an Ivan though. Gnaven and her. Uh... <laughs> mm. Okay. Then with that, let's see. What party do we want to take for uh, story? Hmm. Uh... I do like this party. Let's go with this party. Hmm. And we go for the quest to quit train robbery. Oh wait, when like I've, I am watching like trailers and stuff and everything and another character that will be like coming into this now is Boot Hill, another Galaxy Ranger and he I think is making contact with uh, Dan Hang and Pom Pom first because like at least during the story these two are the only ones currently on the Astral Express. So let's see. It's 12 of tomorrow is until the Charmony Festival. Fetacone's Charmony Festival has entered its countdown phase. Accompanied by Clocky's TikToks, after 12 system hours, this grand celebration will commence with much fanfare. Hey there, Wutel. That's Pluto, by the way. Another Galaxy Ranger. I, I already told you! We can talk things out! <laughs> I'm sorry, Fluffy. I really have something urgent to attend to, so I had no choice but to resort to asking this favor of you all. Since you already know what you're doing, I'll also have to remind you of its risks. Hey, partner, what's with the hostility? I thought pulling this thing out was just a way of saying hello. For the last time, state your identity and purpose. My name's Boot Hill, and I'm a Galaxy Ranger. A Galaxy Ranger? You look like you've seen a ghost. Did you think we all went extinct? <laughs> well, that's the price you pay for being off-grid for too long. Hmm. 
The righteous heroes of the hunt would never hijack the Astral Express. <laughs> I ain't hijacked anything. What, chatting with someone while holding the gun is considered a hijacking? <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> I would make a problem there. But there are plenty of rumors in the cosmos regarding the Galaxy Ranger's current status. And none of them are pretty stories. I have a hard time believing you. Oh, this is hilarious. The tale that this bunch of fools spin is getting out of hand. There's even a bit about the Galaxy Rangers being turned into gibbons by Dr. Primitive and they're in some valley screwing around on swings. Of course, I know you won't believe me, which is also why, similarly, I have a hard time believing that you're the real Nameless. See the bullets in this gun? Nine millimeter, an eternal classic. I may need the Astral Express's help right now, but if you're an imposter just like that one, <laughs> then this bullet might just end up in my head. I can't allow myself to be exposed to danger. That's just the way it goes, so... You all have to first prove yourselves, eh? Huh? Where are you going? <laughs> hmm. Recognize this? <laughs> it's a model fudger. The Jade Abacus of Ally and Oath. The CN Joe really gave this to you guys? Hmm. Model fudger? <laughs> this is the Jade Abacus gifted to the Express by the Senjo Lofu's general, Jin Yuan. Its presence on board serves as the Senjo Alliance's official recognition of the Express. Is that enough? <sighs> Not bad, kiddo. And across these sprawling stars. A gentle squeeze is all it takes to rustle up a whole legion of cloud knights. Now, I reckon that'd be one fudging sight to behold. What does it throw me off a bit that his, like, voice has quite of a tinny sound? I guess it was speaks like you, this would be speaking halfway through, like, a tin can. <laughs> it has, like, really this echoey tinny sound to it which you usually like want to try to avoid but sure it's also why i'm like actually not like using some kind of compressor on this because due to like the other noises in my room the compressor would just like amplify those and would make my War is a lot more tinny, like sound more tinny, so yeah. A compressor usually is nice to have, but not uh, with my uh, particular setup as it is at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, my room is also not that like nicely sound treated, so. Yeah. I just try to try to make the best out of it, even if it's like suboptimal. Hmm. Now it's your turn. Been ages since the Galaxy Rangers had the spotlight shown on them. We ain't equipped with such fancy gadgets. But I've been around the block enough to know the way to handle these types of situations is Easy as pie. Yeah, I kind of understand why it's like such a tiny voice because it mostly looks more of a cyborg than human, really. Both his arms are completely like metal as far as it looks like. Even his upper body. I'm not sure about his legs. He has something on his knee like a metal protector, but yeah. It sounds more cy. It looks more cyborg than human. All right, then. Feel free to toss any questions my way. And let's see if my answers can't turn your trust. If your gut tells you otherwise, 
Still ain't too late to show me the door. And why would I play along? If I truly am a real Galaxy Ranger, you stand to lose nothing. <laughs> All right, then. Tell me, what kind of organization are the Galaxy Rangers? <laughs> oh, my friend, this question is a hard one. I don't think I can even consider us an organization to begin with. Everyone's on their own faded path along the hunt, with their own resolute sense of righteousness and not so welcome among such so-called universal values. Hmm, this reply does not instill trust, and only makes your predicament more... precarious. I'm guessing you're gonna ask about some form of shared faith, right? But us Galaxy Rangers don't need that sort of thing. What brings us together is a shared bottom line. Never bully the weak. Never kill the innocent. These oaths aren't some lofty beliefs, but the fundamental bottom line that one must never cross as a person. As Galaxy Rangers, we strictly adhere to the bottom line. When someone crosses them, the hunt's vengeance will surely come knocking. And in this moment, the other crucial meaning of bottom line comes into play. As long as you don't cross it, you're free to do whatever you please. You catch my drift? Hmm. Second question. Why do you seek trouble with the Astral Express? I already said that I seek no trouble. I must go to Pinnacone for a matter. But I don't have an invite. And I can't even enter the family's hotel doors. If only I could borrow the Nameless's identity. Uh, the entire cosmos knows your guess of the family. Uh, aren't the Galaxy Rangers also esteemed guests? Oh, you've hit the nail on the head. This is why I'm here. It's fine if I tell you. The Rangers are pursuing an imposter. A son of a nice lady posing as one of us. She's on Pentacone right now. My informant is a memo keeper. She's the same as all memetic organisms, appearing one moment and gone the next. Ugh. She scares the fudge out of me. Still, she gave me some vital info. That Galaxy Ranger imposter. Who is it? I think he is talking about... Wait, what was her name again? I'm drawing a complete blank on her name. What the hell? <laughs> the memory keyboard has been with us like for a while now. I'm really drawing a complete blank on her name. What the hell? I will have to look it up after we are out of this cutscene because I'm just like, this is really nagging me. Is that the third question? Is it a hard question? It isn't. Just that you might not believe me. That person calls herself Acheron. And according to our informant, she could be an emanator of nihility. <laughs> That's impossible. That's what I said. Uh, don't worry. When I first received the news, I had the exact same reaction as you. IX never gives anyone so much as a first glance, and that's perfectly normal. What reason would they have to bequeath strength unto mortals? Then you must know that emanators can also conceal their own identities, which, for many people, it's better that way. Otherwise, there'd be wanton bloodshed across the cosmos, or even, perhaps, turning their back on the path they're supposed to follow. I had the good fortune of running into an elation emanator. Its appearance was no different than that of those clowns. If it weren't through sheer luck that I got it drunk, I would have never known of its eminent status. 
Even in the purest hunt, you'll find the Xianzhou Alliance under the spotlight and galaxy rangers lurking in the shadows. Paths are inevitably concepts created by people and exist in planes beyond our understanding. To reckon that nihility emanators don't exist, well, maybe we just ain't nihilistic enough. Hmm. <sighs> So, do you understand now? Your companions are in danger, and it's pretty harrowing. If you don't want to believe me, you'd best send a message to them. But I'd advise you to move fast. Hmm. I would say we've actually already made friends with Acheron, not gonna lie. At least, Welt has, since they have like a bit of a deeper connection, you could say. We don't know what's happening in the dreamscape or how much of what the memo keeper said is true. And that Acheron, who knows what she intends to do. Resume being jumped back to us? Yep. I don't intend to do anything. That's not up to you. Did you know? People who come to the land of dreams for the first time, they'll subconsciously stop to reaffirm that they're still walking on solid ground. And then they will unanimously raise their heads to gaze at the sky. Be it reality or dream, Staring at the sky is instinctual for humanity. Since the day that the golden hour was completed, it's always been there, watching over every single night of decadence. But now this night sky has been mercilessly severed, died, with the mist of nihility. And this whole event happened within the course of a single slash of a blade. A single slash of a blade isn't really accurate. It was actually two blades, just that the second one was faster. That's not the point. <laughs> Many guests who weren't supposed to be invited have gathered at this banquet. Even if the harmony is all embracing, I have no choice but to show some of them the door. For the sake of Panacone and the peace. Is it actually like uh, Harmony itself speaking through them? I was just like, <laughs> I just like the, the weird flex of Acheron <laughs> saying that the one slash to this would actually do. <laughs> I really like Acheron, I gotta lie. Even if she like, not just like, seems to be like not, but she is quite the odd ball, but I don't know the kind of like about her character. The planet of festivities has no place for you, a puppet of nihility. Those who live in the shadows do not bear the right to tread the illuminated stage. Speaking of living in the shadows, there's probably not much difference between us. It's only polite to reveal your true self. At least when speaking to others. Panacone's dream master. <laughs> That's, That's just another reason that, that you can't stay. stay. Whether you believe it or not, this is a real me. Hmm. We are one. 
I don't like where this is going. Is this the unity that the family espouses? My mortal shell has long since dissipated. The Oak family's 107,336 offspring are now my eyes, ears, and mouths, spreading joy across dreams when required. And in times of essential need, exiling evil from this haven in my stead. Not gonna lie, both Star Star Rail and On Came Back Third like to always like run with the same themes at like the same time. We already had like this like hive mind stuff coming with one of the shoes in On Game Back Third with Sarah. And now here with like the three master or like the one responsible for the like harmony here, so you could say. It's just like really similar to that. <laughs> and like Actually like High Resin Terror like actually keeps doing the that like all of the games actually like run with the same themes. Just maybe from like slightly different angles. Um But it's just like interesting to see just like how similar they are when it comes to like blood themes and such, but how they actually manage to like make each time a different story out of it. From the sound of it, it seems like you're asking me to leave, Panacone. I am glad that you're an understanding one. Alas, I'm not asking. If you think you can. Are you threatening me? <laughs> I ended it with a period. It was a statement, not a threat. Knowing who I am and still showing such malice. You're not the first, nor will you be the last. This scene played out many times before. And usually, when faced with my questions, most people retort, Why can't I? <laughs> the result has invariably been that they can't. You are confident. But be reminded, the family is forgiving, but not weak. The chords of the harmony extend across worlds. If you do not comply, when the blade is unsheathed for even a hair's breadth, you will never be able to escape the eternal centurion's wrath in all of your lifetime. One hundred and thirty-seven individuals. That is how many heathens I have exiled since I became Dream Master. Among them were those who once severed my wings, and those who immolated my body. And here I stand again, about to add another mark to the tally. And you will die. I mean, all of you will. <sighs> but that won't come to pass. I'll do as you ask. I'll leave. A wise choice. I wasn't aware there was a choice. To you, that surely is the only option. Please bear in mind, you and Penicone are of different worlds. Those born on the far bank cannot seek solace across the river. Hmm, who says that? Leave and never return. 
The radiance of the planet of festivities is overwhelmingly bright, luring in tricksters, wrongdoers, and criminals. But even the harmony itself will never welcome the self-annihilator of nihility. And even more so, when this self-annihilator heralds the destruction of everything. Your strength is obviously a gift of the sleeping and shapeless, immeasurable and fathomless, like a tributary spawn from the abyss that brings death and sin to all. Don't talk to Rod Rod and I, so... A befitting name. Take it from someone on the other side of your so-called river. You know better than I do that Panacone has already deviated from the Harmony. Whatever your intentions may be, I foresee only one outcome. Its future holds nothing but nihility. Just like all the worlds that have drowned in their shadow. Hmm. Hey, it's switching to Robin's POV. What the hell? Attention, please. The unusual event that occurred moments ago was due to a technical malfunction at Clock Studios theme park. The family has promptly responded to secure the area, and we're happy to report that there have been no injuries. Oh, I swear that was no movie shoot. So many chips fell from the sky, and I even caught one of them. But it vanished in an instant before my very eyes. <laughs> Is he talking Excuse about me. his ultimate? Are you talking about the Clock Studios theme park incident? Why is he literally like referencing Vitrine's ultimate? <laughs> hmm? Yeah, what about it? it oh, Miss Robin, am I seeing things right? <laughs> no need to worry. I apologize for any inconvenience caused to your delightful dream journey. What you just mentioned about the chips really piqued my interest. Would you mind providing more details about the incident? Oh, it was just those chips you normally see everywhere. The green ones? They fell from the sky as if it were raining. And then those chips simply disappeared. <laughs> it appears to be the dream sim tech the Iris family has been developing. Huh? Miss Robin, you mean those chips were all part of a performance? B but I really... Shh. This technology hasn't been made public yet. It was originally planned to debut at the Charmony Festival, but it seems it's been leaked. Can you help me keep the secret? The raining chips... We're supposed to be part of my act. Hmm. Oh, I see. Then it all makes sense now. I'll do anything to help make the Charmony Festival a success. Thank you. As appreciation, I like to give you a token gift. She talked it over smoothly, and if she's gifting that, this is actually. This is not Robin. <laughs> If she's gifting this, then this is... <sighs> wow. Oh, this button is... Press it at just the right moment in the celebration. And there could be an unexpected treat in store for you. All right. It looks like there are other guests who are also confused. I'll have to excuse myself. Please, enjoy the dreamscape. What is sparkle planning? Really, what so is sparkle people planning? talking about it. This commotion at the theme park definitely made waves. The fool always rings twice. Yeah, even with that name, this is like really confirming that this is like sparkle. This damn will affect my children. Which sure, I guess. The 
family promised they would protect the guests within the dreamscape, but I witnessed a group of organic life forms making their way to the theme park. And soon after, a rip tore through the sky, and black rain started leaking out of the void. The family needs to provide a reasonable explanation, or I'll take my loved ones and return to reality. I thought the dreamscape was supposed to be a paradise. If it's not, then there's no point staying here. It appears the good sir has seen many great events. And it's true that an uninvited guest has unexpectedly entered the dreamscape. However, their target is not the ordinary guests, but the ambassadors of the IPC. The family will certainly ensure that the safety of the guests is of the highest importance. Miss Robin, I know the Bloodhound family has already sealed off the theme park and has control over the situation, but it won't resolve the problem. Hmm. The family can try their best to protect their reputation, but as a guest, I don't wish to gamble with my life. But as you can see, sir, no innocent bystanders were affected in this incident. Perhaps the dreamscape is not as perfect as promised, but there's no place safer than dreams under the family's rule. I believe you know this better than I do. If this incident happened in real life, how many people would be able to walk away from it? Hmm. I could stay here, but keep in mind, guests come to Penacone to enjoy the dreamscapes. They do not wish to be entangled in a conflict between the family and the IPC, so let's not have any more unnecessary incidents. Of course. With the Charmony Festival about to commence, we will spare no effort in our preparations. Rest assured. To express our apologies, the family has arranged this gift for the guests. Thank you for understanding. Why is Baga giving these out? You've had quite a bit to drink. Hello. May I ask what happened here? Nothing to be worried about. There's been a small rehearsal mishap at Clock Studios theme park. Please stay calm. Hey, are you a fool? You don't even recognize Miss Robin? Who do you think you're talking to? Uh, uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I've just been transferred to the Bloodhound family, and, and I'm still not too used to working on the streets. I, I didn't realize it was you. I, I'm so sorry. It is not. It isn't even Robin. Hey, but I... don't sweat it. <laughs> you guys have a tough job. I know how it is. How's the situation looking? Oh, we've sealed off the theme park. Most guests are used to bizarre phenomena in the dreamscape, and so far, no threats have been detected. We can expect order to be restored soon. Rest assured, Miss Robin will intensify our patrols to ensure that no incidents occur. I trust you guys. But regarding what happened in the theme park, what do you hounds think about it? It's okay. Feel free to speak your mind. Uh, well... Actually, I was there shortly after it happened. Is it true that the IPC's ambassadors came with ill intent? And that galaxy ranger who easily cut through the sky? <sighs> Miss Robin, to tell you the truth, everyone's been talking about it. The myriad factions on Pentacony have already been causing unease for everyone. Thank you all for your loyalty towards the family. The planet of festivities has indeed run into some trouble. The representative from the IPC... He's trying to regain ownership of Penacony and is prepared for a hostile takeover. Of course the family did not agree. The result of the failed negotiations... is as you see it now. No wonder. So this is the main reason why the IPC staff are banned from entering the dreamscape. Did they apprehend the troublemaker in the end? True, it is also like true. We have like Topaz and... Uh, um, 
Who was the other again? I'm not sure who was the other again, but yeah, the, the, we have two other like APC members waiting outside the Dreamscape in like the the rivalry. And like definitely being up to something and planning something. Don't worry. Mr. Sunday is currently tracking his whereabouts, and I'll have something to show for it soon. However, given the situation, the IPC surely won't let this go easily. Therefore, we are relying on you hounds to maintain the order and stability of the dreamscape. Please be assured, Miss Robin. We take our orders seriously. We won't let those IPC cronies get away with this. Thank you for your hard work. If there are any other members who still feel uneasy, please tell them on my behalf that protecting the dreamscape requires everyone's help. This is a small gift prepared by the Iris family for the guests. There's one for you too. Please, open it at the Charmony Festival for an unexpected surprise. Hmm. I can't believe I received a gift from Miss Robin. It feels like I'm dreaming. Wait, I am in a dream. If trouble wow. comes knocking <laughs> on our door, we're not afraid to go to wow. war. Rest assured. The dreamscape's peace will be protected by the Bloodhound family. Of course you were in a dream. You have been in a dream for a long while now and you're protecting that dream. How silly can you be? <laughs> Miss mm. Robin? That's the renowned cosmic superstar, Miss Robin! I didn't expect to meet a fan here. I'm honored. Welcome to Penacony, a world filled with wonderful dreams. I can't believe I'm actually meeting the real Robin. Sh shouldn't you be preparing for the Charmony Festival? Preparation is important, but the ceremony is fundamentally about sharing the Great One's harmony with everyone. If there's a chance to sing with everyone, I will not refuse. Regarding the recent mishap, I understand it negatively impacted some of our guests. As a member of the family, it's only right for me to come forward and offer my apologies to everyone. But, uh, are you sure it was actually a mishap? Everyone saw those chips descending like rain and the red light tearing through the sky. Claiming it was merely special effects seems a bit far-fetched. Plus, I met that generous gentleman. He looked really out of it and kept talking to himself. Is this also part of the performance? Everyone, please do not panic. I believe that the family will give everyone a satisfactory answer in due time. Even if you say so, Miss Robin, it's hard to believe. It's also like nice how she says and satisfactory very answer, but like not the true answer. <laughs> <sighs> Some people just never listen, do they? It's never ending. It just goes on and on. I'm getting really tired of this. Oh, Sparga letting like her true colors actually slip there for a moment. Miss Robin? Still. I suppose I should keep on helping everyone. I am the epitome of joy, kindness, and goodness, after all. Uh... <laughs> huh? <laughs> what was I just doing? And, uh, who might you be, miss? Ed, what Here, did you do? take this, little guest. This gift has been specially prepared for you by the family. Make sure to take good care of it until the opening of the Charmony Festival. Then, when the show reaches its climax, press the button together with the others around you. <laughs> you never know. Something very exciting might happen. Of course, we're going back to the Dreadblazers period now. We're back to where it all began.
began. You entered the golden hour from this place. And it is also from here where you will enter the true Penicone. Land of the it Exiles. It is a pleasure to journey alongside you once more. But it's time I laid bare the entire truth before you. As you might have heard, I also go by another name. Stellaron Hunter Sam. I know you have many questions. Do you remember when we encountered death in that strange dreamscape? When I was caught by that meme? In that instant before it killed me? I saw the reflection of another dreamscape in its ghastly pupils. So, following the clues in the script, I came up with some theories about the meme. That's why I instructed Silverwolf to issue invitations. Drawing everyone to the Dreams Hotel. I intended to call upon death before you arrived. To solve the riddle using more direct means. And then invite you to join. However, contrary to my wishes, I couldn't defy the script. And I, I didn't get a chance to explain it to you. Aww. It is how you see now. I was impaled by the bladed wings of death. The heavy pressure of concentrated memoria miasma exploded in my mind as if it was actually reality. But after the momentary numbness subsided, I found that my body was absolutely unscathed. I was still alive. And it was just as I thought. I, I had arrived at a place starkly different from this beautiful dream. Beneath the dreamscape of Penicone lies another, more chaotic, more primal memory zone. Its name? Land of the Exiles. Hmm. And so, uh, then I returned to the hotel in the dreamscape, hoping to tell you of its existence. Yet, I, I, I could not reveal my own identity. So, I could only divert your party's attention and lure you away from the battlefield. And after... All my attempts proved futile. It wasn't until not long ago... When a crimson blade of light shattered the high wall of the dream. Causing you all to fall far into the abyssal depths of the dreamscape. That I was able to awaken you and your companions one by one. And, and that's it. That is all that's happened so far. <laughs> I can't get behind it so far. I for know. Now. It's tough to believe all this without reservations. I just want to say... You are very close to the final answer. Just one more thing needs to be done. And then I can prove it to you. Now, let's leave this place. Please close your eyes. Take a deep breath and visualize the dreamscape's outline in your heart. And remember, you must not open your eyes at all times. Three, two, one. Don't be afraid. The one who has come to greet us has arrived. That meme, right? After piercing creature, thick and ferocious search of memoria crashes into your chest. Churning and ravaging your consciousness becomes like scrapes of paper caught in a whirlpool, breaking apart, dissolving, and dispersing within the turbulent, muddy current. Innumerable voices resonate through the symphony of memoria like roaring thunder, and among them, one echo stood out with exceptional clarity. You know it came from the girl beside you, your hearts beating to the same rhythm, peaceful and even more peaceful. Until in the quiet darkness, memory will into existence. I 
Never knew you could do this. Wait, Blade? Driving a car? <clears throat> do you have a driver's license? I do. Also, interesting little detail in the yard work. It's like... What would you call it? It's like... Tear light spreading through the skin. That is... Surprising. Why? Because this is Chapella, the city of sins. <laughs> no, it's nothing. I'm just thinking that you haven't slept in 20 system hours. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. I'll survive. Same goes for you. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Slow down a bit. Infiltration is over. Feel free to activate Sam anytime you like. There's still some time before the next part of the script unfolds. Let me stay a little longer in this body. A long silence ensued. Neither of them brought up any large, uh, any topic. Seemingly accustomed to the silence. It wasn't until much later that a soft sigh once again broke the quiet in the car. Such a long tunnel. <sighs> Didn't feel this long when I set off. In half a system hour, it will lead us to Kafka. And then comes the downfall of the Japella Brotherhood. Is that also part of the script? It's in your script too. Sorry, I didn't notice. <laughs> Their destiny won't change just because of your selective ignorance. <sighs> I told you before, it's a bad habit. What about you then? Is this the moment you finally find the death you've been looking for? As always, it's a blank slate. It's not on this planet. Why the sudden inquiry? Because I'm currently in a car with a sleep-deprived driver. I just want to get there in one piece. <sighs> this car has full self-driving capabilities. I'll just put my hand on the steering wheel. Will that do? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't take everything so seriously. Elio would always say there's only one type of destiny. The inescapable type. He can see the future, and we... ...likewise... ...are aware of our predetermined end. This is also actually a thing that's not new to this universe. Aponia actually like, had a similar ability to Elio, so I'm kind of curious where they're going with it here. Uh, since like Elio is one who appears to like strictly follow the destiny and like the script that's laid out, so as he calls it, where Aponia like actively try to defy it at every like turn and corner like she could and sadly could not manage it but before that moment arrives we can still choose what we do we all have this right don't we after today Chapella's name will disappear from cosmic history and the everflame mansion will take its place in the not-too-distant future, you'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Penagoni. Land of the dreams. Penagoni. I... hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers... or salvation.
glad to see you're safe and sound. Hello, Ed. Close your eyes. This is the answer. Isn't it incredible? The monster that we have always known as death is actually the guardian of the land of the exiles. It abides by a certain rule. Abducting people from their dreams and bringing them here. The question that has been perplexing us, does death really exist in the dreamscape, appears to be a cognitive trap. It was laid by those orchestrating events from the shadows to cover up the truth behind the disappearances and the existence of this fortress known as Dreamflux Reef. Hmm. Every emergence of that meme is related to the Watchmaker. Since Dreamflux Reef is where it brings its captives, it's likely that many of our long-standing questions will be answered in this place. And that's probably what like Sparker tried to do with us to actually bring us here when she um, yeah, threw us into like one of like the dreamer uh, deeper memory spaces uh, in 2.0. The atmosphere here is starkly different from the beautiful dream. There are no regulators here like the family. And they all look like they're mildly dazed. But it means Robin is here. From the whispers of the residents, they've heard a familiar name. Gallagher. It's that man again. Always in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Though that does save us the trouble of looking for him. Himiko and March have already made a move. Get ready. We're about to set off. All right. The real dreamscape, the land of the exiles. Before we go, should we speak to everyone first? All right, Black Swan. How did I forget her name? <laughs> uh, let us pick this one up first. Another somewhere around here and that. I am really sorry for waiting until now to tell you everything. Two reasons. Firstly, the script. In the future that Elio saw, Sam and the Astral Express's confrontation was inevitable. I tried to break the shackles of the prophecy, but this is as far as I could go. That aside, there were also my personal motives. I wished to travel with you as Firefly, and not Sam. Thank you. Elio only gave me one instruction. Allow the Astral Express to pursue the Grand Legacy. It means that the Watchmaker's Legacy holds great significance to trailblazing. And to you. Okay. Elio's scripts used to revolve and expand around certain specific Stellarons. But with your appearance... This condition has apparently ceased to be appropriate. Perhaps he also saw the impossible in the future. Do you still remember that medical cabin I told you about? 
Well, that's Sam. It belongs to the Iron Cavalry of Glamoth's Firmament Frontline. A Firefly Type 4 Tactical Heavy Assault Mech. It is the cradle of my vitality. And the meaning of my birth. And for the longest time it was... How I should have looked to the rest of the world. Interesting. So she's actually just like. Um, a weapon that gains sentience, so to say. The time scale of Dreamflux Reef differs from reality. So we mustn't lower our guard. You're sensitive to Memoria. A slight misstep. And you could get lost in this memory zone. All right. Let's talk to what? Something on your mind? Let's talk about it. I'm just curious about what you have to say. No wonder Miss Acheron is so averse to drawing her blade. It's hard to imagine such terrifying power could reside in an ordinary sheath. If it weren't for the fact that Aventurine's power originated from the preservation, the entire dreamscape would have been affected. Don't feel burdened by this. Even without that Stellaron inside you, Aventurine would still have found other methods to accomplish his goal. Let's just believe in Miss Acheron. And given her prowess, I don't think we've got anything to worry about. He's really confident in Ekra now since he knows she's just another version of Raiden May. During your investigation, he shared a vital piece of information. Mikhail, the former watchmaker who collaborated with the family to construct the Pentaconi we're familiar with today, had a falling out with the family for specific reasons. But this is precisely where the problem lies. You were clearly investigating a murder, so then why, as a security officer, is he changing the subject to talk about his past with the watchmaker? And now, with Firefly mentioning his name again, it's hard not to be suspicious. Mm hmm true though. And we also saw that he attacked Sunday, so... Before we found you, she'd already revealed her Stellaron Hunter identity and shared a lot of information. Who would have thought that the Molten Knight's true identity was actually a young girl? For her, this is a secret that she cannot allow others to know. That being the case, I think we can believe she's willing to cooperate. But she didn't reveal all her secrets. I just can't shake the feeling that her situation is different from that of the typical dreamer. And I hope that doesn't lead to any dangerous predicaments. We'll have to see. I hope you've regained a little composure. We'll move out when you're ready. I want to yank it. Thank you. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, just an NPC. Keep going straight down this alley, and it'll lead to an elevator. It'll take us to the center of the land of the exiles. Um, dude, what are you doing in there? Hmm. 
we hearing so many birds? Jesus. These birds are like densely packed next to one another. Just maybe an indication on how small this map is, but it actually doesn't look that small. It's good treasure hunting. Okay. I mean, I'm hunting treasures, so... Um, story investigation report. I actually want to read this. Uh, wait, where do these notes get put again? Um, because it's a uh, story way, it's clear that it's referring to. Uh, Firefly. Hmm. Investigation report based on Folks aim to shift public reception of story condemnation in the virus. Okay. Do uh, Don't think it refers to uh, the end after all. I just can brew it quickly. Clocky. Looks like the watchmaker also left his mark on Dreamfuck's reef. Because, like, that was quite long. And I don't know, like, wanna read that. Like, um, something that's this long out, which may not even have, like, any interesting thing to it. It's a common plot in a lot of memories and video games that a statue like this will rise up and face you in glorious battle. I mean, I think its eyes are moving. Yep. Just slightly, but they are moving. Something I could have rescued during this, but uh, unbelievable to think there's a settlement of this size within the dreamscape and all beyond the family's reach. What is interesting? The atmosphere in this fortress is uh, pretty different from that in the beautiful dream. When I first saw it, I was in awe too. The sky here, it's like a reflection of the 12 dreamscapes. What's even more bizarre is that this place is also separated into trade and residential areas. The layout may be simple, but the facilities are very comprehensive. It seems that there are quite a number of people living here. Though both dreamscapes have distinct styles, the architectural designs are quite similar. Works of the same hand, perhaps. Hard not to speculate on the connection. But there's no point in overthinking things. Let's meet up with Himako and the others first. Take a right turn at the end of this road and you'll reach the Trade District. There are more people there. And perhaps someone knows where she is. Not coming with us? The Astral Express likely needs room for some internal deliberation. In the meantime, I'll try and locate Gallagher. 
Sure. Let's reconnect later. Right. Letting her go was the right decision. Further observations Mika. are needed before we decide whether to trust her. But first, there's someone I need to talk to. Let's go. I'm sure you've already noticed him. He's right over there. The Reverie Hotel's bellboy. How did he end up here? And right after Miss Acheron severed the beautiful dream. We'd better check, just to be sure. Mm hmm. That's definitely sus. Perfect. And perfectly legal for me to stay here. What are you talking about, boy? Why are they being such weirdos? Birdie, ah, there, a the lantern. Explore this bit by bit. Let's talk to Mika and Cloggy first. Huh? Uh, Misha. You're the guest from before. <laughs> we meet again! And a new friend. Uh, forgot to introduce myself. I'm the hotel's bellboy, Misha. Hello, Misha. I'm Welt. Uh, we met in a dream. Oh. And who might this be? Tick tock! Old friend and new friend! Let's high five! Your um, memory zone mean? <laughs> nope. Cloggy is a good friend of mine. We all live here. How did you two get here? This dreamscape isn't supposed to be open to the public. I wonder if it has something to do with Sleepy. Sleepy? So this is your home? Yep. After my work in the beautiful dream ends, I'll go back home. Commuting used to be more convenient, but ever since travel became cumbersome, Sleepy started ferrying people back and forth between the two dreamscapes. Oh, is he talking about, like, the memory zone meme which has been attacking us? This Sleepy, can you describe what it looks like? Sleepy is a memory zone meme. Looks fierce and has many eyes. But it's actually really well behaved. Gallagher's been taking care of it. Based on the description, that meme is indisputably death. A nightmare for the family, but for the people who live here, well, that couldn't be further from the truth. D death Not in a dream, surely. Sleepy's just a little aggressive, and sometimes messes up by fetching the wrong guess. But it would never hurt anyone! <laughs> I see. Has it brought back any guests recently? Say, in the last day or two? We're currently investigating a missing person case that occurred within the beautiful dream. I see. Then you'll have to speak with Gallagher. But he's currently busy hosting a visitor from the Oak family and specifically asked not to be disturbed. Um, Mr. Yang, the person you're looking for... Is it Miss Robin? Mm, just as I thought. Considering what happened with Miss Firefly, this doesn't come as a surprise. If you're looking for Miss Robin, I can lead the way. She told me that she'd be willing to meet with outside guests. If it's not too much trouble. 
Also, we're looking for our missing companions. Um, a woman with red hair accompanied by a girl with pink hair. Have you seen them? Oh, I... I haven't. But please, rest assured. Dream Flux Reef is a small place, and it's not as bustling as the beautiful dream. But its safety is unmatched. Uh, how about this? Since it's your first time here in Dream Flux Reef, I'll be your guide and help you find your companions. And then we can all go visit Miss Robin together. Sounds like a nice plan. She's gone to Mrs. Grace's to visit the children. She won't be leaving anytime soon. So there should be enough time. All right, then. We'll uh, follow your plan. Well, we now know the answer to both murder cases that have caused such commotion in Penacone. As for the intentions of the mastermind behind it all, we are still none the wiser. Yes, and I believe their relationship with Gallagher may run deep. Why else would they be so clandestine about their discussion? Regardless, we have to find Gallagher. We definitely do. Say, you mentioned before that you saw a clocky that only you could see, right? I can't shake off this strange feeling. Am I really still so young at heart? You definitely are. <laughs> Forget it. It's not important. Uh, we'd better just follow Misha. I don't want to be real mean too well, but he's definitely not that young at heart anymore. Nope. Far from it. Considering his actual age and that he had to meddle with like 100,000 consciousness at the same time. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> I wouldn't call him young and hard anymore. Not after like experiences of that kind. Sounds like gray stones, or like tombstones. Oh, I just was wondering where it was, but this actually looks like a black, like this is how usually black holes get depicted. So interesting design choice. Sure, why not? Uh, this area is rather big, not gonna lie. Like, not big, but connected. Um, I mean, you can go through this and go over there, so. Let's check out the other side first because this looks like um, it would actually be like a bit of a dead end. <laughs> I want to get like to some dead ends first, just so I don't have to like memorize so many paths to go to. Also, I saw the bird already here, a few miles away. of your emotions. Mm. Uh, <laughs> to leave the dreamscape forever.
Because you can pick up like a lot of stuff. Ah, huh, another one of these. somewhere around here. Ah. <gasps> ah, you actually can like jump around with these this thing. the most spectacular view of Dreamflux Reef. A black hole? No. An accretion disk formed from consolidated memoria? Was Dreamflux Reef built on such unstable memoria? Oh, so Mr. Yang is also versed in memoria dynamics. I was just trying to figure out how to explain this huge hole to everyone. I bet you guys have a lot in common with Miss Kami. Kami? Who is that? I'm not even sure what uh, Bud actually said there, but okay. Um. I'm just a wallflower. Come here. Look, there she is. I didn't want to talk to you, Percy. are finally done in another 10 system hours the above dream will swallow the dream below my hypothesis was correct this place will cease to exist as the dream devours everything hmm? who are you all and why haven't you left yet this place is about <laughs> to disappear i don't think you even know how to get back A dreamscape surveyor specializing in memoria dynamics. And this is my life's work that I'm researching. See that huge gaping hole? It was just a narrow rift many years ago. But now, it's grown into a giant hole. The surrounding memoria has been flowing towards the other end of the hole at a constant velocity, slowly but surely. But the scary part is... According to my calculations, the flow rate of Memoria has recently changed, and it's faster than ever before. It's almost 
almost as if something is sucking it in from the other side. By constantly improving upon Madame Rosalina's memoria measurement method, I've finally obtained accurate results. After 10 system hours, the Dreamflux Reef will cease to exist. Just like the melting of glaciers, everything will crumble and disintegrate. The dreams on that side of the void will fuse into one. Uh, please don't worry. This sort of thing has happened many times before. Miss Kami isn't a bad person. She's just a bit... lost in her own world. She'll probably realize she's wrong soon enough. Uh, in ten hours. <laughs> you don't say. There was a something else that piqued my interest. Who is Madame Rosalina? Oh, do you know her too? Or are you also a fan of Memoria Dynamics? We're very interested in Madame Rosalina's achievements. Uh, could you tell us a little more about them? Why, of course. She's an excellent scholar of Memoria Dynamics and the first person to apply Memoria Rate Measurement Methodology on interstellar travelers. Regrettably, due to the presence of the Garden of Recollection, ordinary people don't pay much attention to the nature of Memoria. She departed this world without much fame, leaving only a few thin journals behind. I came to Petaconi to learn more about my idol, and went to great lengths to seek out Dreamflux Reef, all because this is her final resting place. Prodigies always meet their demise prematurely. If only Madame Rosalina had more time, she would have discovered a way to reverse the flow of Memoria. I felt it. The source is in the Golden Hour. There is a certain anomalous presence stirring the currents of the Memory Zone. I must uncover more concrete proof. I must convince everyone. Um, okay. Does the name Madame Rosalina sound familiar to you? I feel like I've actually heard it somewhere before. Right. That's right. It seems like she did a great deal of research and calculations in Dreamflux Reef before abruptly passing away. Miss Kami regularly mentions her. I hear Madame Rosalina passed away during the prison war. <sighs> she could see the Panacone of today. It's people building homes in the memory zone. <laughs> I bet she'd be really happy. Perhaps. Our destination is the commercial district. That's where the largest crowds gather in Dreamflux Reef. We might be able to find the others there. Okay. And we're on the town, alright. Oh, let's go over here. Why is she singing Robin's song? <laughs> also, for those for those who do not know. Let me go. Please come to your senses. I'm begging you. What are you doing, Marge? Um. They um, Iris is actually like making a proper like song act out of Robin. They actually like released the album for her today <laughs> with like three songs. I actually like really going a bit into the idol side of things with her. Ghost, there's a ghost! Don't come near me! Oh my, I'm human and so are you. Can you get a grip? Uh, Mr. Yang and Mr. Trailblazer, I've been waiting for you. Quickly, come help. I bumped into a member of the family on the way here. He was so scared and I just wanted to calm him down. But... Let me go, let me go! I've only done good in my life. Why can't I rest in peace after death? Well, this is how it turned out. Now we should pay respect to ourselves the ghost of three people. Uh, me? A ghost? Don't make me hit you. <laughs> he thinks he's dead. 
Although, when I first fell in, I also thought the same. Dear guest, this is not the afterlife. This is Dreamflux Reef. That's right. Did you hear that? Repeat after me. Dream Flux Reef. You... You're talking to someone invisible. If I'm not dead, what am I? <laughs> I shouldn't have pushed my luck and tried sleeping in my dream. Curiosity kills the papushi. <laughs> Stop asking! You'll alert the monsters! All the dead are right here. All of them! Uh, you're not talking about the memory zone meme, are you? <sighs> Don't say that name! It's all your fault. Th they're coming! Well. Uh... Weep for the departed. Sack, sack, sack. Oh. He passed out. His intense negative emotions attracted the nearby memory zone memes. I see. But why aren't the other people around here scared? Unlike in the sweet dream, people here don't see memory zone memes as dangerous monsters. And even if they pose a threat, people can easily escape by forcing a wake-up call. But we can't just leave this man here. Can we take him somewhere safe? I guess we can. We can ask Jesse for help. I've gotten to know many locals while waiting for you guys. Everyone here is living a self-sufficient life. I don't know how to describe it, but this place feels like the real dreamscape. Or like a bourbon real city, you could say. Like just uh, like making me check all of the uh, air labs. Like went. <laughs> what are you selling? Okay, they're just like usable, like, like consumables. I'm gonna just like pick up one of each, just to have them, I guess. Let's have a toast to dreamscape strength. Shop here. Wait, uh, this is a violin. No, wait, they're smaller. How do you call the, the big ones again? The, the bass? Ah, he actually has music. Give me.
Anyway, it's cool. Alright. Rooks up. Uh, this does. Why does this one? I don't know, because it's up. Uh, It's a lot harder than it actually is. Um, about it harder than you do. And we can yank another bird. I didn't want to talk to you, come on. Evening, Jesse. Um, is it evening? <laughs> Welcome, Miss March. Who might these be? These two are my friends. As for the man lying on the ground, uh, he's a scaredy cat who fainted from fright. Thank you, Emma Katie. Welcome to the chat and thanks for the follow. I'm doing fine. What about you? <laughs> I see. Another poor guy who accidentally ended up here. I'll take care of him. There have been a lot of new faces lately. Things must be tough in the beautiful dream. Hmm. The few remaining havens of freedom in Astana will soon face trouble. Astana? Do such things often happen here? Not really, Thank you. but they're becoming more frequent now. Guess it's one of the signs of the sweet dreams collapse. This man has had quite the shock. Could you help me find a Halovian lady march? Her songs can heal mental wounds. She's talking about Robin. Well, we actually like wanting to go to, to her after this anyway. A Halovian lady? That must be Robin. She's also here in Dreamflux Reef. Huh? Robin? But I thought she... Oh, right. If Firefly is here safe and sound, then it means Robin must be okay, too. <laughs> well, thank you. Besides for the me, VTuber mod, where all of the other stuff is done by myself. <laughs> Misha is about to take us to her to find out what happened. But before that, let's meet up with Himiko. You were with her earlier, right? We met some stowaways in the residential area. Most of them came from neighboring star systems. I heard that places like Dreamflux Reef are scattered throughout the memory zone of Asdana. 
Like islands in the ocean. They existed before the family arrived. I also heard that when Dreamflux Reef took shape, it was the center of all dreamscapes in Penacony. If that's true, it's no wonder there are so many similarities between this place and the Sweet Dream. Himeko must be gathering information. Let's hurry up and get going! Maybe we don't do it for yourself, sure, or not. Uh, where's the chest I'm hearing? Oh, right there. <laughs> mm. Look. Oh. Give me your emotions. Thank you. Okay, we like, explored that part already, so let's follow along with the story for a now. we'd gather the remaining details here. <laughs> to borrow Gallagher's catchphrase, what an unpredictable twist of fate. Hey, Mika. Himeko, here they are. Ah, oh, perfect timing. Now that everyone's here, I'd like to introduce everyone to Micah, who's partly in charge of the Land of the Exiles. Micah, these are my companions. Hmm... I mean, maybe we can talk about it, but please pay attention to my chat rules. Don't advertise for yourself. Um, yeah. At least not in the chat. It's a pleasure to meet the Nameless. You know us? I've been keeping an eye on you since the day you arrived in Penacony. We would have met under more appropriate circumstances if Dreamflux Reef hadn't been isolated from the Twelve Dreamscapes. Well, I can take a look, but I won't promise anything. <sighs> Please, allow me to formally introduce myself. I'm Micah. The Gravekeeper of Dreamflux Reef. Gravekeeper? Life in Dreamflux Reef is pretty liberating. Everyone here mostly keeps to themselves, without meddling in others' affairs. My daily task involves cleaning a few tombstones. You're too modest, Micah. When lost dream chasers stumble upon this place, you're the one who takes care of them, guiding them back to the sweet dream. Or showing them how to survive the wild dream chaos. I'm glad you like how it looks. So, a uh, guardian of sorts. Hmm? Uh, were you talking to me, Mr. Yang? Mm hmm? <laughs> On that note, Mr. Mika, uh, which tombstones are you referring to? We didn't come across any graveyard when we arrived. <laughs> They're actually just symbolic stones. But since you're curious, Mr. Yang, I'll take you there. I have a feeling you might find something of interest there. Uh, but before that, you have an important guest joining you. An important guest? Who could it be? This way, please. The roads here in Dreamflux Reef are a bit run down, so watch your step. So this right. is the so-called Freedom Alliance. I think I've already seen these tombstones, I think. Wait, no, that's Robin. There Hello, she Robin. Is. <laughs> Everyone sang so wonderfully. It's not often that I tried this music style, but I've gained some valuable insights from it. 
Oh, I can't thank you enough, Robin. Well, these kids have made incredible progress in only a few days. It was nothing, Grace. I merely taught them how to sing. It was you who brought hope into their lives. Life must be quite difficult for them in reality, I imagine. That's right. Whenever it's time to say goodbye to these kids, they're reluctant to leave. But I've explored every corner of Dreamflux Reef, talked to everyone I met, and they all told me the same thing. This shattered dream is not worth clinging to. <laughs> it seems you truly are a child of the Harmony. Emma and Andy are orphans I took under my wing. Carol there, with her blind eyes, used to work at a nutrition center in the outer ring of Penacony. And as for Gary, he's been living with autism since he was a child. They're not old enough to enter the sweet dream managed by the family. If we compare people to birds, these kids are like fledglings with impaired wings. But in this dream, well, they can fly freely. Even if they stumble along the way, well, they're still relying on their own strength. And me, an old lady with no legs. Well, without this dream, I couldn't even walk toward them. I'm glad that you found a new life here in Penacony. It's just... Don't worry, Robin. Dreams have their significance, but they aren't everything. Both the children and I understand this. No matter how long we fly through this dream, we will one day return to reality. But you know what? Emma and Gary aren't plagued by their insecurities anymore. No, and Carol is learning how to cope with her blindness. And Andy is livelier than ever. Well, even I've become more optimistic. <laughs> You see, in dreams, we learn how to live. Once we return to reality, we learn how to survive. Hmm, actually not that far from the truth, to be honest. And should our feathers be damaged, then we share our wings with one another. There's no need to covet an illusory sky in dreams, because we have the right and the ability to fly towards a broader horizon. It's a relief to see you safe and sound, Miss Robin. It's nice to see you all again, Astral Express crew. I heard my disappearance caused quite the commotion out there. I'm really sorry about that. Since you're here, can we assume that you're fully aware of the situation in Penacony? Ever since I returned to Penacony, my voice started to change. Until it gradually faded away. At first, I thought it was a temporary ailment. Perhaps due to having been away too long. I thought maybe it'd just take some time for my body to acclimate to the high concentration of memory and as Donna. But now it seems... The root of the problem goes way beyond me. There are elements around me that don't align with the harmony. I'm losing my voice. It's just one of the signs of the sweet dream's collapse. Oh. The sweet dream's collapse? That memo keeper mentioned the same thing. So it's real. It's interesting that like her voice actually is like connected to the balance of like uh, the harmony in this place. Kind of weird and I don't know how it quite functions, but sure or not, I guess. While I was away from Penacony, the boundaries of the Twelve Dreamscapes kept expanding outward. But whenever I mentioned the anomalies in my dreams, all the family heads refused to talk about it. Only my brother was willing to respond. Later, I discovered the secret letters from the IPC ambassador, which further convinced me that there are hidden secrets beneath the surface of Penacony. So... Following the clues in the Oak family's dossiers, I found my way here. The land of the exiles. Concealed by the family under the guise of death. A dream within a dream. A 
of Penacony's past is buried. Hearing you speak, it sounds as if your voice has made somewhat of a recovery. I hate to admit it, but the harmony in this place resonates more broadly than within the sweet dream. Interesting. It's regrettable, but the family has experienced betrayal. The traitor, or traitors, abandoned their original principles and, using the name of Harmony, exploited people's weaknesses to turn Penacony into the planet of festivities, trapping everyone in the illusion of the sweet dream. This is not the strong defending the weak, but rather the strong exploiting the weak. A world without equality won't ever be favored by the Harmony. And naturally, those voices blessed by them have lost the ability to sing. Could there be another force influencing the family's shift in philosophy, Miss Robin? Considering what happened with Acheron, it's difficult to conceive of another entity within the realm of the Harmony capable of influencing everyone. Unless a power surpassing that of an emanator is involved. <sighs> I'd heard about what happened to the Sienjo Alliance. But as far as I'm aware, the family hasn't faced any such external interventions. Who knows? Perhaps I've just been away too long and missed something. I don't know if there's a still on you. I cannot accept my home is moving towards the very opposite of what the Harmony represents, while still claiming to uphold it. I must uncover the reason why Mikhail cut ties with the family, and who exactly it was who betrayed us all. Do you remember our arrangement, Mr. Micah? Well, here's my answer. I've decided to forgo my role and never step foot on the Charmony Festival stage again. Huh. Interesting. Look here, brother. A little bird. Looks like a fledgling Charmony dove. But Charmony doves don't live here. So how did this little bird get here? Maybe its parents abandoned it? It looks weak and frail. Why don't we find something soft and make a nest for it? This place is too dangerous for a fledgling. Let's take it with us. We can put it on the wooden shelf in front of your window. Okay. A bird like that must have a beautiful singing voice. Uh, but where will it live? I'll ask the family head to build a cage for it. A cage? But then it won't have the freedom to fly. Right? Right. Let's see. What is it that has captured the attention? of the two best interpreters of the Great One. To the point that they've forgotten how to enjoy their dessert. Who is talking and why is he so, uh, um, calling himself the Great One? Oh, poor little thing. Doesn't look like it's doing well. Do you want to rescue it? I do, but I don't want to lock it up in a cage. Why? Even if it's small and not fully feathered, it can't sing. It didn't come into this world just to be locked up in a cage. Birds, they should be flying free in the sky. <laughs> That's quite the romantic idea. And what about you, a young scholar? Do you agree with your sister? I think she's right. But if we leave it out in the wild, it won't survive for more than a few days at best. Ah, I see. It seems our little scholar is still a bit unsure. Well, let me tell you youngsters a story. As you probably know, Charmony doves can fly through the air. 
when they fly really high, the friction caused by the flapping of their feathers against the atmosphere creates amazing lights so that they look like shooting stars. How does that work? If it would create lights, wouldn't it mean that they like their feathers would start to burn? Poor birds. We've seen this spectacle so many times that we think it's just something they can naturally do. But that's not the truth. Their radiant display is the result of countless struggles against nature over generations. Their ancestors were too weak to survive on the ground. So, to escape predators, they started seeking new opportunities in the air. After countless attempts by many generations, one of them finally figured out how to fly. It soared into the sky and never looked back at the ground again. So, you mean... Birds aren't born to fly, but they find a way to do it through their determination, right? Well, that's an idealistic way of putting it. So, <laughs> what are your thoughts, Sunday? I... I think people believe birds are meant to fly because they've never seen those birds crashing to their death. That's an interesting perspective. So, have you decided what to do with the bird now? For now, I'll keep it in a cage until it can take care of itself because... I... I want it to live, no matter what. Well said, kids. It seems each of you has found your own answer. Your insights are truly remarkable. And I hope they come true in their own way. Hmm. We will take good care of it, won't we, brother? <laughs> yeah. But, Mr. Gopherwood, there's one thing I don't quite understand. Gopherwood? Interesting name. And what might that be, my son? What if this little Charmony dove never learns to fly in the end? I mean, if there are fledglings in this world that can never fly throughout their lives, should we let them go back to the sky, only to see them crash to the ground and die? Talking in your sleep, Birdie? <laughs> Time to wake up. Good, huh? <sighs> ah, he's with Sunday. Huh? Need a hand? I'm still alive? Yeah. Happy about that. Where is Robin? Tell me. Now. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the first thing you'd ask. Don't worry, your sister is here, safe and sound. She's probably walking around the streets now. If I were you, I'd be more worried about myself. <laughs> After all, right in front of you is the guy who just stabbed you in the chest with a dagger. <laughs> if you sure. wanted to kill me, you wouldn't give me the chance to speak. Just tell me your demands. Lackey of the Watchmaker. So, you figured out who I am, huh? No wonder you had the guts to go against the Dream Master and the Four Families. Looks like I made the right choice. Choice? You are aware of my plan and see through my act. Time is running out, so let's drop the charades. I'm suggesting we cooperate. Cooperate? What makes you think I'd cooperate with you? Hmm. The fact that the famous Robin has chosen my side. Plus, some clues about a traitor and a bright future for Penacony. 
Any of that catch your interest? It probably definitely does I catch your interest. hard to believe a man who's full of deception. Fine. You don't have to trust me. What you should trust is... There's a man who is full of deception uh, himself and kind of works along with Sparkle. <laughs> He's not one to talk. The sense of justice inside of you. Show me Robin first. All right, as you wish. Here she is. Huh? What's your trick this time? <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, this lady will lead us to Robin, right? And the crew, too. There are too many people who you owe an explanation. <laughs> That'd be great. Please follow me, Honorable Oak Family Head. Now, all the actors are on the stage. Hmm. Moments later. This is the monument I mentioned earlier. The names inscribed on it should be familiar to all of you. It's probably all of the nameless. Rosalina and Tiernan. When Penacony was known as a frontier prison, it was the trailblazers who connected it with the stars. They were the heroes who saved us Donna, and their names deserve to be immortalized. Not just on the small stone tablet, but in the annals of history for all of time. However, today, the planet of festivities is nothing but sweet dreams. That heavy piece of history is all a distant memory. Just like that prison. If their names are inscribed here, then that means... According to Micah, they died long ago. Rosalina was killed during the War of Independence. She ventured alone into the heart of the star system to investigate the flow of Memoria, but she never returned. Hmm. Tiernan was a skilled gunslinger, strong and reliable. He led the people through countless battles, but he didn't live long enough to witness the arrival of true peace. In the decade following the war, Penacony faced challenges internal and external. To protect Asdana, Tiernan took up the way of the Trailblaze and led the Lantmoth family to explore beyond the system, only to be surrounded and wiped out by the swarm. The swarm again. Though I had expected as much, the tales of these heroes truly are sorrowful. True to the title of Trailblazer, they spent their lives venturing into the unknown. But what about this tablet? There are no names carved on it. When Dreamflux Reef was created, its owner was still alive. However, he insisted on erecting a monument for himself, saying that it will happen someday. Here we meet again. Everyone from the Astral Express. Robin. Rob. Got a full party now. Can I actually talk to each of them individually? Sure, this isn't what they have to say. Brother. There's no need for words. You're safe. And that's all that matters. Okay. Well, I did my job. I gathered everyone here. Gallagher will explain the rest to you. Take care. The atmosphere sure is livened up with all these people in here. <laughs> I guess it does. I brought Gallagher here. It's time to face the truth. Yep, let's hear about it then. Tell me, Gallagher. I what promised has you to give the siblings some privacy, so let's talk about our business first. What do you say? That sounds sensible enough. Since you went through the trouble of gathering the family head, the crew, and the Stellaron hunters, I'm guessing you have something important to say, Mr. Gallagher? Oh, is it that obvious? The look on your face is practically screaming, I'm the one behind all this. <laughs> True. 
You're right, Mr. Yang. It is indeed time to come clean on everything. The siblings already know what they need to, and they've made their choice. But you, Nameless, arrived a bit late. So it's only fair that I answer your questions. Before we begin, let me reintroduce myself. I'm the founder of Dream Flux Reef, the deputy of the Watchmaker, and the one who sent out that invitation. As Gallagher, the history fictionologist, I humbly extend my greetings to you all. Greetings. History fictionologist? So what, everything you told us was made up? Well, don't worry. Almost everything I shared was true. Well, except for the part about the family accepting me back. I double-checked with Micah, and everything he said about the family, the Watchmaker, and Mikhail is true. Thank you for your understanding. Now let's get down to business. I'm sure you're all wondering why I went through the trouble of setting up this battle for the legacy. Inviting different factions and stirring up a ruckus all over Penacone? No. Well, it all boils down to something very familiar to all of you. The Stellaron. Oh, so there actually is a Stellaron here. Who would have heard? The Stellaron? But how is that possible? Penacone is a free-flowing interstellar hub. There are no signs of contamination whatsoever. You're totally correct. So, care to take a guess at what that means? I wish that were the truth. But if that were the case, I wouldn't have invited all of you. The sweet dream doesn't come out of thin air. If you think of the memory zone as the sea, creating the land of the dreams is like filling that wild ocean with earth to make an island. Mm -hmm. To achieve this feat, without the help of an emanator of remembrance or enigmata, the only way is to use a Stellaron. Oh. And that's not something you can achieve with a simple wish. It requires vast quantities of knowledge, time, and manpower. I'm sure you get what I'm hinting at. In Azdana, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster. Uh, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster? It all started a long time ago, back when the Watchmaker and his crew liberated the Frontier Prison. They faced countless challenges as they began building Penacone from the ground up. That's when the idea of using the Stellaron came into play. The Stellaron first entered the Azdana system during the war. The Nameless warned everyone against the folly of attempting to tamper with such a power, and most heeded their words. But there are always people in the shadows with ulterior motives. Very true. The turning point came after Tiernan's death. With two of the Nameless gone, the Watchmaker had to go to the front lines. It was at that moment his rivals saw an opportunity. By the time a representative from the Montour system's family arrived at the Watchmaker's call, the Stellaron had already been activated and was seeping into the primordial synesthesia dreamscape. And I suppose the family happened to possess the knowledge to seal the Stellaron? Not just that. They knew far more about the Stellaron than the average person. They helped Mikhail swiftly quell the civil unrest and played a part in building Penacone under the disguise of the Harmony. Those three eras were known as the Age of Dreaming. The Watchmaker, who had been left in the dark, sent out invitations across the universe, spreading the hype around the land of the dreams. Then, how did they turn against each other? Remember the island in the ocean metaphor? The truth is, the Stellaron was never truly sealed. It existed in a different form within the dreamscape. Think about this. What would it cost to create and maintain such a lavish dreamland? It's people's lives. The opulent dream is built upon the decay of spirits. 
with a toxic elixir called pleasure flowing through the dreamscape. It tempts people to indulge in the dreamscape, and gradually their minds succumb, becoming nourishment for the sweet dream. Confusion, laziness, and cowardice, weaknesses that plague humanity were magnified and nourished by the family. Panacone became a new kind of prison, even more impenetrable than the previous one. Sadly, we realized this far too late. By then, the family had a firm grip on Penacone, swiftly quelling any opposition that arose. There is in comparison to May, actually, that's like just a different kind of prison now. But the whole concept uh, in general has already been like weird to me because when you think about it, there's lots of people coming here, like, like living their sweet dreams, having their pleasures. But uh, there's actually like never any talk of them, like leaving. It's just like always more and more coming, and like you don't hear anyone talking about like trying to leave or go or whatever. At my wit's end, I had to use the power of the Enigmata and sought refuge in this chaotic realm. Over the years, I created a meme within this dream for our use. Dormancy. That's its real name. We exploited a loophole. You see, regular people can't fall asleep again while they are inside the dreamscape. So this is the true meaning of the impossible. You sent out invitations in the Watchmaker's name to find forces capable of resolving the Stellaron disaster and draw them into Penacone to uncover the truth. It's not just that. Above all, I wanted to see what happens when the major factions engage in a struggle for the legacy. Since this is the Watchmaker's first announcement in decades, the traitor within the family is bound to reveal themselves. So, the legacy is just a facade. Hmm. If you want to consider the Stellaron as the legacy, I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> if that's the case, where is the Stellaron now? That's a question for Mr. Wings. The Stellaron is still under the family's control, and as the head of the Oak family, I'm sure he holds all the answers. I would say it's that floating castle we've already seen, like in the Golden Hour. And also where, like, the stage for the Charmony Festival is held. Because there must be a reason why, like, they're building up this Charmony Festival, like, to being, like, the breaking point where, like, the so-called final occurs. Because we're, like, literally getting a countdown of hours for this Charmony Festival. And that's on purpose. Are you done talking? So, will you tell us where the Stellaron is? <laughs> it is the Panacone Grand Theater itself. My guess was right. As I suspected, it's the embodiment of the family. The edifice that first materialized within the Sweet Dream. That's what turned Panacone into its current state. As for the person who employed its power, it is in fact Mr. Gopherwood, the current Dream Master. Well, that was easier than I thought. Did you conduct your own investigation already? Correct. When I was trying to track down the person who murdered my sister, apart from you, Gopherwood was my second suspect. Confronting me first turned out to be a smart move on your part. I didn't have other options. The Dream Master has been elusive, and even the heads of the families can hardly get an audience with him. Moreover, Mr. Gopherwood has been kind to my sister and me, and I didn't want it all to end like this. What do you mean by that? To be honest, my brother and I are also victims of the cancer of all worlds. 
We grew up as orphans and were adopted by the family when they came to help. Mr. Gopher Wood recognized our potential and brought us to Penacony. But I can't just stand by and watch Mr. Gopher Wood become an enemy of the Harmony. I won't use my voice to support an evil cause. I won't step on that stage and sing, no matter who the traitor is or what orders they give me. I won't let the Charmony Festival become an event that destroys Harmony itself. For the paradise in our dreams. Indeed. For the paradise in our dreams. As the head of the Oak family, I'm responsible for ensuring Penacony's promising future. Robin and I will head into the sweet dream and confront the Dream Master. And if it turns out that the family has truly strayed from the Harmony, I'll fight alongside you. We'll put the Charmony Festival on hold and make sure Mr. Gopherwood pays for his blood debt. The enemies you are about to face aren't like this old dog here who can barely even bark. I gotta like Sunday getting serious. <laughs> Especially when it means that he's fighting on our side. Since our interests are aligned, why don't we team up? Maybe, just maybe, we'll have a shot at success. We have always been following in the footsteps of our nameless predecessors. And there's no reason to stop now. <laughs> yeah, we nameless won't back down from a challenge. Isn't that right, Mr. Trailblazer? That's true. Actually makes me a bit nervous. <laughs> Rest assured, sitting on the sidelines isn't in our nature. Mr. Sunday, Miss Robin, I'm willing to accompany you on behalf of the Astral Express. Having a third party present should help with negotiations. And could make all the difference if things get ugly. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Thank you all very much. The Charmony Festival is about to start, and time is against us. We must hasten. Let's go then. Everyone, let's gather over here. We still need to make some preparations. Mm. I'm not sure if we actually will be like uh, leaving this area soon or not. Hmm. Is there anything else to explore? There's like this small area here. I just wanna check if I've explored everything here first before we like peace out a year again. I'm just a little bit of the rooftops. Permanent boarding pass. Okay. Uh, <gasps> got you. Uh, name this hero. Festivity and I publish. Once a band of adventures for Schwarzman. Ah, is this like a depiction of uh, the two trailblazers? Cool. Great nice to actually like, get a depiction of them. Actually, the ghost. Too. Okay. Hmm. 
There you go. Wait, I still need one more. Uh... <laughs> Sorry. Uh... <laughs> it's called bless you in English. Und dank dir. <laughs> Und hallo. Mm. I'm struggling way too much with this right now. Uh... Not, this is not helping. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Actually, you've missed quite a lot more streams if you also want to like watch German streams because I do this on my YouTube channel. Hmm. <laughs> Why am I struggling with this so much right now? What the hell? Why is kind of it like this because of the mirror? Ah, there it goes. I need to find a gun as well. <laughs> oh, why is that? First time I hear people not being able to watch live streams there. I'm just a wallflower. I think you like to talk to Yank and see where this goes. Wait, I hear a bird. Where's the bird? There it is. I mean, you can watch the individual videos or like the weirdies at least. Well, I hope at least. <laughs> I may have been quick to step up to the plate, but confronting the Dream Master could be a very dangerous affair. Uh huh? Even you're saying that, Mr. Yang? Uh, uh, how powerful is that Dream Master? He's the leader of the families of Pentagoni, and he has the entire power of the Harmony behind him. Not to mention the Stellaron in his possession. We must proceed with great caution. He does sound dangerous if you Maybe it like you this. can just stay behind this time, Mr. Yang? No, that won't do. Even if we count Robin as an ally, something felt off about Mr. Sunday just now. Although, I can't quite put my finger on it. I have to make sure he won't turn against us when things start to get dicey. Hmm, there could be the potential danger of Sunday already being possessed by the Dream Master. At least somewhat, because like the Dream Master has been like putting all of like the Oak family into his like hive mind. I'm just gonna call it. You're still carrying the keepsake the IPC envoy gave you, right? May I borrow it for a moment? 
What's the keepsake again? Oh. Ah, that's fine. Have a good rest. <laughs> I knew it. As I suspected, this chip Venturine gave to you is actually a miniature transmitter. If I'm right, he intends to use it to track your location or contact you when needed. As it so happens, this may actually be of some use in the current situation. Sure. Just don't like... <laughs> <laughs> Stay up too long because of it. If you do need your sleep, get your sleep. I won't be bad at you just because while well, you're getting your rest. <laughs> Aventurine? Is he still alive? And what does he have to do with our mission to confront the Dream Master? Remember what I said earlier? Working with the IPC is a way to keep the family in check. If negotiations go south and the family show their true colors by going after the Stellaron, I'll use this transmitter to send a message to the IPC. It'll be just the opportunity the IPC ambassador was hoping for. The only question mark in all of this is Venturine's current status. But the IPC is always listening, especially senior strategic investment department heads like him. Getting the message across shouldn't be a problem. And we actually have two of them on standby in the reverie, so yeah. <laughs> there will be no issue with them getting the message. Good luck to you, Welt. Well, you take care too. If anything goes wrong, don't worry about me. Just make sure to seal the Stellaron. Spoken like a true hero. <laughs> Even if the Dream Master is innocent, the family's corruption runs deep. I won't make the same mistake Mikhail did. Let's wish him the best of luck. Oh, I am. Don't wishing you have too. something else to tell us, Gallagher? Why would you say so? Before we departed, the conductor asked us to inquire about the three nameless in Penacony. We've already collected intel about Rosalina and Tiernan, so the only one left is Lakework. I also was wondering about it. I just forgot the name of the third one. That's why I haven't been asking, but yeah. There were three nameless here. If I'm not mistaken, we've already met him somewhere, haven't we? Hmm. It's not enough to say meet, but the answer is pretty obvious. After all, I've hinted at it in quite an evident way. I've been watching over you ever since I received the reply from the Astral Express, and I've seen the great effort you all put into linking different realms together across the cosmos. And now, after getting this far all in one piece, you have truly proven yourselves. Miss Himiko, were you the one who repaired the Express and got it sailing through the cosmos again? Yes. And you two, young Nameless, you have very interesting life stories and extraordinary skills. Why does it always feel like all of the other people know everything about us? It's kind of weird how they easily know our backstories. What? Uh, hey, you can't just make up titles like that. <laughs> You're full of energy. Please send my regards to the conductor, Pom Pom. Please let them know that their friend had fond memories from his time aboard the Express, which he reminisce on every time he had a good drink. As for the last nameless, he embarked, disembarked, and embarked again, traveling in a great circle, ending up back where he started. Okay. On his deathbed, he told me to find the Astral Express and deliver an invitation to the future Nameless. He left behind a special gift, a true legacy. Something that belongs only to the successors of the Trailblaze. 
So we're not after the legacy of the Watchbreakers, and, but uh, we're actually after the legacy of the Trailblazers the entire time, so to say. <laughs> Quite interesting, not gonna lie. Come with me. Now is the time to reveal him. Ooh, show me. Do show me, please. Uh, back here again. You have been here the entire time. Sometimes I feel like you're still alive, old friend. Like you've still got so much to say and do. I've kept my promise. Brought the future trailblazers you've waited so long for. I don't know why you were so obsessed with that train. But I remember your last words. Don't let us down, old man. I'm ordering that too. What the hell? <sighs> Wait, a path to defeat her? Go ahead. His resting place lies in the garden up ahead. The first and last nameless of Penacony. Mikhail Char Legworth, the Watchmaker. Huh. So it was both the Watchmaker's legacy and the legacy of the Trailblazer. Chester's. All right. Mm, what's the bread? I'm not hearing like any brewers. Wait, are you another chest? Beneath the sea surface of memory zone, in a garden closest to the full moon in the water, an elderly man rests on a recliner. Uh, rests on a recliner enveloped in utter silence. The watchmaker Vikail Charles Lackbrook has passed into the endless, timeless dream where no sound could ever awaken him. Sure enough, the watchmaker is the third nameless. Even I could guess that one. The legacy he left behind was a dream bubble. I believe inside that bubble, there's something that holds meaning only for the nameless. After all, when I checked its contents, I found nothing inside. Maybe some trailblaze runes? Even more mysterious than me. Well, let's have a look. As your words seize Himiko nods ever so slightly in your direction. You take a deep breath, steady your mind, and turn your gaze towards the watchmaker. Touch the dream bubble. You press your hands against the dream bubble and the thick vicious memoria converges under strain, then stretches outward from your fingertips as if weaving a delicate web that gently cradles your palm. A chill travels from your fingertips, carrying with it the myriad of ripened and intertwined memories as experience would suggest. But this time, you see nothing at all. Time to focus and capture the memories. The dream bubble is clearly extraordinary. Perhaps the approach was wrong. You think, holding your breath and closing your eyes with one knee on the ground, you press your forehead against the thin film coated in memoria. And before you, there remains an abyss of darkness. 
No Crimson Sun descending upon us, no capped mountains, no gentle laughter, no twinkling stars, no echoes of swords clashing, and most of all, no traces of trial blaze. There's nothing, and nothing is there. Indubitably, this is but an empty dream bubble. Wait, what's going on? Seriously? Uh, there's nothing inside this dream bubble? Hmm. How could a dream bubble be empty? <laughs> Just as I suspected. That old man always had this strange belief in the nameless and the trailblaze. And I never understood where he got that confidence from. Especially since he never managed to get in touch with the Express while he was alive. I could never figure out what was going on in that old man's head. This empty dream bubble is so typical of him. He was always full of weird fantasies and incomprehensible romanticism. <laughs> <laughs> that mischievous old man. Well, I didn't expect him to leave anything concrete behind anyway. Don't think that's the case, Gallagher. I guess, <laughs> I'm sure Mikhail has left us the most precious thing of all. <laughs> Don't start getting all philosophical on me, all right? Just as Mikhail believes in the nameless of the future, we unconditionally believe in the nameless of the past. How could they leave with regrets for the future when they were ready to dedicate their lives to the land they loved? There must be something contained in this dream bubble. It's just we haven't figured it out yet. You also have faith in the Watchmaker. Don't you, Gallagher? Well, I'm a follower of the Enigmata. My philosophy forbids me to have faith in anything. Hmm. That's why I understand what faith means in the path of Trailblaze. And I also want to know what he left behind. <laughs> I'll leave it to you guys then. Hmm. Can I borrow your pet? I need to make a trip back to Golden Hour and check something at the Dreamscape sales store. It's for Mikhail, and for the future of Penacony. Wait, Booters POV. <laughs> Welcome to the Reverie Hotel. How may I help you? Greetings. We're the Nameless from the Astral Express, and we'd like to check in. The Astral Express? But I thought... Yes, my companions already checked in. My name is Dan Hung, and I believe my personal information is recorded in your system. I see, but your companions said you wouldn't be coming due to a change of plans. <laughs> now the plans have changed again. And you are... Me? I'm <laughs> a new nameless who's also with the Astral Express. I would never believe him to be Pom Pom. <laughs> I'm not sure if anyone will believe this egg, but okay. <clears throat> He's my fellow trailblazer. We responded to the family's invitation before he boarded the Express. So, he wasn't registered in your system. <clears throat> Is it possible to accommodate him as well? Oh, I see. Another one of the Nameless had a similar situation. Seems like a lot of people are joining the Trailblaze these days. Since there's a precedent, it shouldn't be a problem. Just give me a second to contact your companions. I'm sorry, dear guests, but it seems I'm unable to reach the other members of the Astral Express. What do you mean by unable to reach them? My apologies. This is the first time I've encountered a situation like this. However, the system indicates that those guests are still in the dreamscape. How about this? Give me their room number, and we'll go check on them ourselves. I'm afraid that's not possible. I need to verify both of your identities before I can share any guest information. How about you just wake up someone? Let's say, uh, 
Welt? I'm sorry, but there are strict rules regarding Forced Awakening. It cannot be done without the proper clearance. So nothing works, huh? What's your solution then? Are you saying we sleep here? At the reception? Please be patient. We need to contact your companions in order to confirm your identities. And now it seems you need to confirm our identities before you can contact our companions. <laughs> it seems so. That's a dilemma. Oh, fudge. Look, nothing personal. But if you can't handle this, go find someone else who can. Okay? Uh, please calm down, dear guests. I do recall that Mr. Sunday, the Oak family head, personally handled this issue earlier. Oh, please wait a moment while I contact him. I don't think she's trying to give us a hard time. She really just doesn't know what to do. I have a bad feeling about this. You tried to contact them on the express earlier, but they didn't respond. <sighs> They're already deep Something in trouble. That doesn't seem right. I need to leave for a moment. You can stay here with the receptionist. Sure thing. Just don't keep me waiting forever. Don Hong seems pretty worried about his companions. I should give him some space. Stressing out about it won't help anything. Well, okay. We are switching POVs here, but... I think for me, this will also be a good time to end the stream here. I would like to stream longer, but unfortunately... <coughs> Um, I do have some stuff to do, and I also have to go to work tomorrow, so we'll save the rest of the story for next time. Um, not sure if I will be, maybe be able to get to it tomorrow. Um, just don't expect a stream of me uh, this weekend, because I will be yeah, doing stuff for friends on the weekend. Doing a, like a film marathon, watching the Neon Genesis Ever Game films. So yeah, I just uh, switch back to the trailer. It was pure release, I, just so I have no, like, no touch, issues with every moment. Like loading and getting stuff. Hmm. Let me just see how much, uh, is that a shade that I get? Maybe we can go for another, ten, uh, like, ten roll. Mm. I don't really care about the stickers right now. I'm just gonna like get uh, jade out of it, so I'm just gonna put it all in here. Don't know what it is. Same here. Is that Gallagher? Those are the Trailblazers. And of course, Robin. Uh, It is. What is all like graffitis? Sure. Uh, it's like no. Let's see. Okay. What do we care about us right now? Okay, we were far off from like getting any like another 10 warp. But okay. As I said, holding the stream here, let's look for someone who can raid.
Let's give another German friend a raid. And with that being said, I do hope you enjoyed it so far. We'll definitely like will be continuing on with the story soon. Because I'm actually like really curious where the story is going, so it kind of annoys me that I actually need to stop you, but hey. <laughs> eh. Well, we will get to it soon. So yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. Give some support. And also be nice over there in your stream. Always be nice and raid. Just so you know. And with that being said, we will be seeing each other next time. And then, bye bye.